Hello. Hi. Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to the Mind Museum's Facebook page for another edition of Mind at Home. I'm Mind Mover Aaron. I'm one of the resident science communicators and biologists of the Mind Museum. Okay, so um, we're already on day 90 or more of our uh, community quarantine here in Metro Manila. So I think that uh, some of you are already getting bored or you're already having some problems uh, at home because of staying at home. <laughs> so um, while it's the general community quarantine is still in effect, so it's still advisable that we stay at home except for uh, essential purposes going out, such as buying groceries, uh, getting medicine and the like. So while we're still stuck at home, so while we're doing other activities such as playing games or having fun with our friends and family, so we at the Mind Museum believe that uh, you could also do some activities, simple activities at home that uh, need simple materials and you could learn science concepts from, okay? So for today's edition of Mind at Home, so we will be doing another biology activity. So uh, previously, we've already talked about the smallest things inside our body. So that would be the organelles, the cells, DNA, and proteins. So now for this morning, we will be talking about something that you could actually see and something that you could actually hold on to. So that would be your hand. Okay, so we will be making a hand model for this morning. Okay, so if I could just bring up my slides again. All right. Okay. So this morning's activity is called handy movement. So what we will be doing is making a hand model from simple materials. So those materials would be uh, some paper uh, and any writing material. So that could be a pen, pencil, marker, or whatever you have at home. Some tape. You'll be needing some tape for this activity. Some straws and yarn. Okay, so those will be the only materials that we will be needing to simulate your hand. Okay, so the question that we will be answering this morning is what makes us move? Okay, so you might already know the answer. So this would be your muscles aided by your bones. Okay, but there's actually one more thing that we need to connect those two in order for them to work, to, for them to actually move. Okay, so those three simple ingredients would be your bones, your muscles, and the third missing ingredient, your tendons. Okay, so the bones are very hard, okay, and they have a structural purpose. So that means they give form or structure to your body. So without the bones, we would be a, just a mess of skin lying around on the floor, okay? So the bones give us the initial structure, but they also give other uh, purposes. They have other functions. So say, for example, your skull. So inside your skull, it's a hollow space which protects your brain inside. So it also has a protective function. And then you have some bones that you could actually see. So those are your teeth. So they have a chewing function. So they break down large pieces of food into smaller food, uh, smaller chunks before you swallow them for digestion. Okay. So the second ingredient would be your muscles. So the muscles are the things that actually allow you to move. Okay, so they contract, so they shorten, but they, so that's when they are in use. They shorten, they contract, but when they're not in use, they are still contracted, but not as much. Okay, so that's because muscles are always in a sort of state of tension. Okay, so, uh, if the muscles aren't in a state of tension, if it releases your bones all at once without any tension at all, you would still fall down, okay? Your, your bones would not be able to keep the structure, okay? So, so think of your bones sort of like a frame where you build upon your body and then the muscles keep the frame intact, okay? So it keeps it secure. So that's because of the tension in your muscles. And then the last ingredient would be your tendon. So this is a kind of connective tissue. So connective, it means it joins stuff. And then tissue, uh, apart from your toilet paper and paper towel, so tissues are a group of cells that have the same function. Okay, so we've, see, uh, we've discussed that cells can do things on their own, but when they work together, they become a tissue and they have another function 
that is uh, inherent to the tissue itself. So for the connective tissue tendon, okay, so what it does is it connects muscles to bones. Okay? And then we have another kind of connective tissue, which is the ligament. So that connects bone to bone. Okay? All right. So uh, these are just words for now, but let's see uh, what they actually look like inside the body. So we have here a group of muscle, bone and tendon. So the biceps brachii, so that would be the orange to pink part here in the diagram. Okay, so I guess you've heard of the biceps. The word biceps is actually Latin for two heads. Okay, so bi means two, and then sep comes from the Latin word for head. All right, so that means two heads, and then brachii means arm. So it means the two-headed muscle of the arm. So as you can see here in the diagram, so there's two heads of the muscle, one here and one here. So that's your biceps brachii. All right, so we have the white part that connects the muscle itself to the bone. So that would be your tendon. Okay, so we have one for each head and one here, which connects to your forearm. Okay, and then so for the bones, we have here this long one at the back. So this is the humerus. So that's the arm bone that you have here. So that's just one single long bone. All right, and then here at the top, so just for context, so this is your collar bone. And then here at the back, the flat bone is your scapula or the shoulder blade. And then here, these two bones over here are actually the bones of the forearm already. So there are two bones here. All right. Okay, so now we will be going to our activity proper itself. All right. So the first step that you need to do is to get your piece of paper and then trace out your hand, okay? So I have here a piece of paper, okay? So this was actually printed so, the, uh, so that the models look the same, okay? The three models that I have look the same, all right? But for you guys at home, so just get any piece of paper, okay? And then place your hand over it, trace it out with a pen, and then ask your parents or your guardians to cut out the, thing, the hand um, uh, figure for you, okay? So what's important is that the fingers are separate. Okay, so there, there's no pieces of paper here in between so that they could freely move. So they could move separately, all right? So the next important thing to draw out is the lines of your hand. So if you could see, so fingers have lines here at the joints, okay? So joints are the places of connection between two bones, between two different bones. So in the joints you have ligaments, and other liquid that helps you move it at that joint. So make sure that your diagram also has those lines, okay, where the joints should be. Okay, so that would be useful when you uh, make the model move later. All right. So after you've drawn out the outline of your hand and the lines of the fingers, so the next step would be to fold the piece of paper along those lines. All right. So I think all of us have fingers that close this way and not towards the back. So what you would do is to fold it inward. So you'll fold it hiding the line, okay? And then you'll open it up and then fold it again at the next joint and then fold it at the last joint where the finger meets the knuckle itself, okay? So you'll do that for all the fingers. You'll fold it out and then after that, so get your straw. So uh, these are the plastic straws that I have. So these are recycled already. Okay. So what you're going to do is to cut out a piece of straw that fits within one fold. Okay. So say, for example, here in the index finger, so we have uh, this size of paper. So you're going to cut out a smaller straw than that and then tape it. Okay. So the straws would represent your bones. Right, so after you've done uh, taping it all, so your hand model should look like this. All right, so we have our bones here. Okay, so we have one for each uh, between the joints. We have one uh, piece of straw. Okay, and then we have some straws here too. Okay, so that's both for uh, accuracy of the model and for you to easier, uh, more easily pull the fingers later. 
All right. So if you'll notice, we have five over here at the palm and then just one here at the bottom. Okay. And then finally, what you're going to do is to get some yarn and then you're going to thread the yarn through the holes of the straw. Okay. So uh, do one piece of yarn per finger. So you would need five pieces of yarn, which should reach from the top of the finger towards the bottom here with some excess for you to pull on. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. So after you've completed uh, the yarn, so you'd need five pieces of yarn, one per finger. So what it should look like in the end is like this. Okay. So we have our finger model here. Uh, the fingers, the palms, and the wrist. And then we have their bones. So I've colored the straws differently. So we'll uh, show you later why. And then we have the pieces of yarn uh, threading through each finger. So make sure to tape the yarn at the top so that it doesn't uh, get, go out uh, when you pull it. And then we have some excess over here. Okay. So as to why I colored the bones differently. So if I'll show you my slides. All right. Okay. So we have here the picture of the bones of the hand. So these are just bones. So there are no muscles yet and no uh, tendons and ligaments. All right. So what you'll notice, so there are some labels. So the phalanges, so that's just the scientific term for fingers okay, or digits. All right. So that includes the part from the knuckle up to the tip of the finger. So that's a phalange, a digit. All right. So if you'll count off, how many phalanges we have, phalangeal bones, uh, finger bones. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Oh, sorry. So these are just two. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. So if you look at our model, so it also has 14 straws at the fingers. All right, so if I could just stop the sharing. Okay, so we also have 14 straws here. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Okay, so the model is accurate for the number of bones in your fingers. All right, now let's look at the number of bones in the palm. Okay, so the bones of the palm are called scientifically the metacarpal bones. All right, so if you could guess, the bones of the wrist are called the carpal bones. So the carpals are over here, and then the metacarpals here. So we have five palm bones, five metacarpal bones, and our model also has five. Okay, so that's one, two, three, four, and five for the thumb. Okay, so the model is only uh, slightly inaccurate for the wrist. So there are actually eight wrist bones. But here in our model, we only have one for us to pull it easier, okay? And then the yarn, so that represents your muscles and tendons. So if we look at the next slide. All right, so this is how your hand looks like without the skin. So that's already the bones and then the muscles and the tendons are connected inside. All right, so if you'll notice here on the right picture, so we have five pieces of white stringy material. So there's one, two, three, four, and then it's actually a bit hidden for the thumb. So it's this one. Okay, so those represent the five tendons of the muscles that close your hand. Okay, so and here in our model, we also have five pieces of yarn that allow the hand to close. Okay, and then on the left picture, so this is what the hand looks like when you look at it from the other side. Okay, so this is the reverse side, the left picture. So this is the same hand. This is the left, the right hand. Okay, when you're looking at it from the top and from the palm side and the back of the palm side. Okay, all right. So what's gonna happen? So when you have your model here, okay, so it's a bit flimsy on mine. So I'll show it first from the side. So the fingers are flat, okay? So when you have your muscle, so the muscle here is my fist, the one that's holding the extra string, and then the tendons are these blue pieces of yarn. So when the muscle contracts and pulls on the fingers, 
So it closes. Okay? So when I relax the model again, so let me show you again from the side. So when I pull on the tendons, that allows your fingers to close only at the joints. Okay? So since the, jo uh, the pieces of bone in your fingers are between the joints, okay? so that allows this part to stay rigid or uh, hard. Okay? So it, you can fold it with, within the joints, okay? but you cannot uh, bend the bone itself. Okay? So that's because of the hard material uh, that your bones are made of. All right, so if I show it to you from the front, okay, so the model is a bit flimsy, so if I could relax it a bit, all right, so the fingers are open, and then I have the uh, yarn here, the tendons, and then my hand is the muscle. So if I pull on the model, all right, so the finger, the fingers close. All right, so the limitation of this model is that it only represents the closing of the hand. Okay, so as you've seen, if you've seen the, picture if you look at it uh, quite properly. So there are actually five more tendons at the back of the hand. Okay, so that allows your hand to open again. All right. So you could just add some pieces of string at the back of each finger and then another group of yarn to pull it and then that opens up the hand again. Okay. So that's our activity for this morning. So that's the handy movement model. So it shows you how the tendons play an important role uh, to move your bones and the parts of your hand uh, towards the palm. Okay, so with the, without the tendons, the muscles wouldn't have anything to pull on for the hand to close. Okay, so if you have any questions, so leave them at the comment section below. So uh, while we're still live, we'll answer it right now. But if not, just leave them below and we'll be answering your questions throughout the day. Okay, so while we're waiting for your questions, if you've noticed, the muscles that move the hand aren't on the hand itself. Okay, so they're actually here at the forearm. So that's why the tendon is very long. So if I match it up with my actual hand, so this represents the tendons that runs through my forearm and the muscles that are here. Okay, so there are actually two groups of muscles that move the hand, those that are in the forearm and here on the hand itself. Okay, so those that make the hand open and close are found here in the forearm. And then the muscles that allow the fingers to spread and to rotate around their uh, joint with the knuckle, those are found here on the palm itself. Okay, so if you're holding onto something, you could actually feel some muscles that are moving here at the forearm. So Hold on to uh, the base of your forearm, uh, the part nearest the elbow, and then try to close your hand. So you could actually feel that something is tensing up or closing inside. So that is the muscles. Those are the muscles that allow your fingers to open and close. Okay, so exceptions are the muscles of the thumb and the pinky. So they have extra muscles within the palm that help them to move towards the middle of the palm, all right? So that allows the pinky and the thumb to rotate. Those are found also here inside the palm. Okay, so let's see our questions. All right, so how does this work for internal muscles like the heart? Okay, so um, I guess you're asking how the model would work for the heart. Okay, so it's uh, basically the same. Uh, the main difference with the heart is that it doesn't have any tendons, okay? So um, the heart is actually almost purely muscle, okay? So it's muscle that has spaces in between. So that's the main difference with um, the bones here, okay? So before that, okay, so these are actually called voluntary muscles, okay? So you have to think that you want to close them so that it actually closes. So when I'm closing it like this, the brain sends a signal to my hand to close it, okay? So the case with the heart, that's an involuntary muscle. So you have no control over it. So it just continues to relax and contract, relax and contract uh, without you thinking about it, okay? So if you want to have a model of the heart, uh, a more accurate representation would be a stress ball, okay? So the stress ball is slightly 
it's elastic. So when you close on it, it automatically opens back, right? Okay, so that's similar to how the heart works since it's a pump. It pumps blood around the body. Okay, so imagine that your stress ball has holes inside. So that's where the blood goes. So when the muscles of the heart contract, when they close, it squeezes out that space inside the heart. So that's why the blood goes out of the heart again. Okay? And then when it relaxes, when it opens, the spaces between the muscles open up again, and then the blood goes in again, and then the cycle repeats. Okay? So that's a more accurate representation. So we'll be, I'll be sharing a link uh, to your comment later on how you can make a heart model. Okay? So that's a circulatory system model of the heart. All right? So let's look at our next question. So why do your fingers make a popping sound whenever you bend them? Okay, so it's actually a combination of different things. Okay, so let's look at our slides again. All right, and then let's show you the picture of the bones. All right, so let's look at uh, this one, the intersection. So this is the knuckle joint between the index finger and the bone of the palm. Okay, that connects it to the wrist. All right, so here in our model, so you could see that there seems to be no connection between the two bones. They're just, uh, magkadikit lang sila. They're just jointed together. Okay, so the, uh, what's actually missing from this drawing is that there's a pocket of uh, liquid here. Okay, so for those of you who do uh, skin care, you may be familiar with hyaluronic acid. Okay, so that's what, uh, what's inside a vessel here. So imagine that the joint is covered in a balloon. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then the balloon is filled with hyaluronic acid. Okay. So without that, so the acid acts as a lubricant. Okay. So it allows your joint to move freely without pain and without friction. Okay. So since it's a liquid, so when you pull on your finger, so let me just stop the sharing. So when I pull on the finger, so this is that same joint. So the space inside the container with liquid expands. Okay, so when it expands, since there's no liquid that's going inside, it forms an air bubble. All right? So when you pull on it enough, the air bubble bursts. Okay, so it bursts faster than the speed of sound. So that's why you can hear a popping sound. Okay? So it's actually a container filled with liquid. When you pull on it, uh, an air bubble is formed. And then when you release that air bubble, when you uh, make it burst, so that's where the popping sound comes from. All right. Let's have our next question. Okay, so why do we experience... Ah, okay, sorry. So why can some people bend their fingers or thumb backward to touch the back of their forearm? <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so this could be due to several things, actually. So the first thing would be that their muscles are longer than the average person. Okay, so since there's more material to work with, so that's how you could bend it more. So the second thing would be that their joints are more free. Okay, so say for example, here in our elbow, so it only allows your arm and forearm to hold like this. Okay, so you can't really rotate it much like this. So uh, the reason why it rotates like, like this is because of the shoulder joint. Okay? So it doesn't happen here. It happens here. So it only folds this way. Okay, So it could be possible that their joints are slightly more loose so that it allows it to move towards the back. Okay, And then the third thing is that, okay, so this is actually a bit more technical. So there's a sort of sensor inside the muscle so this is called the Golgi organ. Okay, so this is different from the Golgi apparatus that we discussed in an earlier mind at home. So that's an organelle. So the Golgi organ is a sort of stretch sensor. Okay, so when it senses that your muscle is getting stretched too much, that means it's uh, relaxing too much. Okay, so it's going to uh, stop the muscle from stretching even more. Okay, so it's sort of a... Uh, <clears throat> sort of like you're holding on to a rope and then you're just keeping it taut, okay? It's sort of like keeping this taut. So if it relaxes too much, 
uh, it stops it and then it allows it to go straight again. Okay, so it could be that their uh, Golgi organs are a bit more, uh, le they're less sensitive to the stretching pain or to the stretching uh, action itself. So that's why they could move it towards the back without any pain uh, whatsoever. Okay. So next question. So why do we experience numbness when for a long period we place our hands under the pillow while sleeping? Okay. So we said earlier that uh, the voluntary muscles in our hand are controlled by the brain, the nervous system. Okay. So the signals, they pass through some cords uh, called nerves, the nerve cells. Okay. So your nerve cells pass the message from the brain to the hand to close. Okay, so when we sleep at night, so when we uh, lie on the on our side, okay, so what happens is that since there's a nerve here in our forearm, so it's compressed. Okay, so when it's compressed, when it's closed, similar to how you bend a water hose. So when you bend a water hose, the water doesn't go out already. So when it's compressed, the signals don't get to the hand. Okay, so since there's no passage, uh, no passageway for information about whether your hand is hurting or whether something's happening to pass back to the brain. So that's why you experience numbness. Okay, so there's no signal that's getting to the brain that's telling you I'm feeling something. So that's why you're not feeling anything. So which uh, that's numbness. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. So I guess that answers your question. So next question. So why are apes the only ones with opposable thumbs? Okay. So uh, this is related more to uh, evolution. Okay. So in <laughs> okay. So let's uh, go through evolution a little bit. So evolution happens when you have a mutation. Okay. So we di we've discussed mutation in an earlier mind at home. So you could go check that out. So mutations are random. Okay. So they happen without any instruction from the organism or the person itself. So say, for example, uh, before our ancestors uh, didn't have opposable thumbs. So similar to how dogs and cats have their hands, so they just look like this. They look like paws. Okay? And then uh, a mutation suddenly came wherein it, we had opposable thumbs. Okay, and then we discussed uh, in an earlier mind at home still about natural selection. Okay, so what happens is that the traits that are randomly given to us, the environment picks which it thinks is the best that can adapt to where you are. Okay, so probably we saw that uh, apes with opposable thumbs could get more food than apes without opposable thumbs. Okay, so since the ones with opposable thumbs could eat more. So they survived for longer. So the ones without opposable thumbs died off. And then um, the trait that was selected, so the opposable thumb trait was selected. And then when you uh, make offspring, when you make babies, the trait is passed on. Okay? So it could be that the mutation only happened when the apes came. Okay? So that means the ancestor of the apes didn't have opposable thumbs. And then a mutation came where it was useful. So that's why it uh, persisted until today. So as modern apes, humans, we also have um, opposable thumbs. So that came from our very first ancestor that had opposable thumbs. Okay. So we have our next question. So some have extra fingers that can be moved. How come? Okay. So um, this... Uh, is more related to when you're still a baby inside uh, the uterus of your mother. Okay, so what happens is that we all came from just one cell, right? So that's the union of the sperm and the egg cell. Okay, so when it forms into that one cell, it divides and it divides until it uh, gives us ourselves. Okay, so our bodies are made of billions of cells, but that just comes from one okay so um th that cell actually knows what kind of other cells to make basically okay so it knows that this part of the clump of cells makes a hand 
this one makes the heart, and so on and so forth. Okay? So it could be possible that when your body was dividing, when you were still an embryo inside your mother, when it was dividing up the cells for your hand, it did not realize that it was already making an extra one, a sixth finger. Okay? And then, so that could be the case that that extra finger also has bones, it also has muscles, and it also has a nerve. Okay, so what's important is that there's a nerve in that extra finger. Okay, because that allows your brain to send a signal to that sixth finger to also move. Okay, so there are cases where extra fingers cannot be moved. So that's because uh, there's no nerve inside. Okay, so without that nerve, a signal wouldn't get through for it to move. So for those with extra fingers, it could be the case that there is a nerve. So it is a functional sixth hand, a sixth finger, sorry. Okay, okay so uh, we have a lot of questions, very interesting questions. So thank you very much for sending those in. So if you have any um, pahabol questions, so please do send them now and we'll try to answer it live. So for those that have uh, sent your questions now, so we'll be answering them again in a written form. And then we'll be adding in materials for further reading. Okay, so uh, the human anatomy is a very interesting subject. And the hand is one of those uh, very interesting uh, masterpieces of natural selection. Okay, so there are 27 bones inside your hand. And there are more than 15 muscles that allow for its movement. So that, and our hands are very important because they allow us to work, they allow us to play, and they ba most basically they allow us to survive the very harsh outside world. And since your hands are very important, it's also very important that you wash your hands always. Okay, so even without this pandemic, so it's important that you wash your hands to keep them clean and to keep yourself safe. Since your hands are holding almost everything that you do, so your laptops, your phones, uh, spoons and forks, and everything, pieces of paper. So they get the most bacteria and germs, okay? So it's always important to wash your hands, okay? So even after the pandemic's over, always wash your hands, okay? And then for our experiment, uh, when you get, uh, if you get some wounds from cutting or from a paper cut, so just be sure to wash it properly so that uh, no bacteria or virus would be able to get inside, okay? So it seems that we don't have any more questions for now. So thank you very much for sending in those interesting questions. I hope uh, all of you learned something. So I also learned something. So it's important that we keep our curiosity alive even during these times because that's what's uh, gonna drive us forward after this pandemic. Okay, so thank you very much for watching this Mind at Home. So if, you've, uh, if you're going to try this activity, our handy movement model, so make sure to take a photo and tag us at the Mind Museum and use the hashtag, hashtag Mind at Home. Okay, so that we can share to the others how you did it and how you did yours differently so that it could work better or it could uh, answer a different question from what we did this morning. Okay, so we will be having another Mind at Home on Wednesday. So that will be still here at the Mind Museum Facebook page at the same time, 11 a.m. So it will be something edible. So be sure to always wash your hands so that you could have a clean hands when you try out and eat that activity on Wednesday. So once again, thank you very much for joining us this morning. I hope you enjoyed and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Let me wave with that. Bye-bye. <laughs>